Good morning. Well, we continue our studies in Mark's Gospel, chapter 10. Turn with me, if you do, to we can look at verses 13 to 16. But first, let us turn our hearts and minds up to God to help ask him by spirit to lead and guide us. Lord, on this new day, we open this word. Give us open hearts and open minds to hear you speak. Amen. Let's read, shall we, from verses 13 to 16. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them. The disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms and put his hands on them and blessed them. Let little children come to me is a well-known verse and one that we like and teach children and perhaps in our society in the West today we value children really well, generally. But uh, when we look at the passages that Jesus is now uh, talking about, he's talking a lot about the vulnerable and the weak in their particular, particularly in that time. Jesus is journeying to Jerusalem. Uh, now he's in a moment where he's doing some teaching. And we have three particular passages. Yesterday we looked about marriage and divorce and particularly vul women who were vulnerable. And Jesus seems to readdress part of that in some of his teaching. Uh, the next section we'll look at is about possessions and the rich young ruler. Well, this particular one is about children. And uh, why would children be brought for Jesus to touch them, to lay his hands upon them? Well, we're not exactly clear as to what was the motive behind the parents, but we do know at the end that Jesus blesses them. It could possibly be to heal or to teach, but more likely, when we see Jesus as an infant himself was taken in Simeon's arms and blessed, I think it's probably something like uh, similar. Parents probably wanting Jesus to, to pray for them, to pray for their physical well-being, to play a blessing spiritually upon them. Now, for us, we could understand that. It seems very natural, of course. Why wouldn't a rabbi, a teacher, why shouldn't Jesus do that? I think we're influenced much by the images that we've been brought up with our understanding of Jesus and the New Testament. But when we look back to the original context, we realise that children had very little value in Roman and even in Jewish society. They were seen as an extra mouth to feed. And then children sometimes would be an annoyance. They would not be recognised as anything of any value, and perhaps up until the stage of adulthood of 12 or 13 years old. Sons would be seen as a blessing, particularly because they could continue the family line, but also be increasing their physical labour in the field. And in that society, the children probably are not highly valued. It can make the disciples' response understandable. This is how societies in some parts of the world still view children. And uh, if these also children, while we generally would value them, are not valued by everyone. Well, the disciples, why would the disciples stop the children coming to Jesus? Well, I just wonder if they're like that great receptionist that you can't get past when you're wanting to speak to get an appointment with a doctor or a dentist or to that person in a power authority who sees it as their job to be a barrier between that important person and the general public. Perhaps that is, but it could be understandable already knowing that the crowds sometimes have been a problem to Jesus and the disciples in ministry. At one point, they can't eat because the people are pressing around them. Perhaps they're trying to give Jesus some space. However, Jesus' attitude is very, very different. Jesus, it says, when he sees them turning the children away, he was indignant or angry, some translations use. It's the only word, the only time you find in the Gospels where Jesus is indignant. The word in Greek means to arouse, to anger. And it reveals us something about his character and nature, his compassion for the weak, the seemingly defenceless, the vulnerable, the powerless. 
And Jesus turns this moment of the disciples' actions, like this question about divorce, like this rich young ruler who will come, round to a teaching moment for the people and his disciples. And in contrast to them, he welcomes the little children. Now we love this passage. Often in church when we have dedications, we refer to Jesus' attitude to children because it teaches us what our attitude to children should be. He welcomes them and he teaches something. In this, it says, let the children come to me, do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. You see, what does he mean? Is the kingdom of God just for physical children? Well, no, there's something beyond about children and their innocence and their approach to Jesus, which should reflect our approach to God and God's kingdom. He goes on to say that if you, that we are to become like them, I tell you, if anyone to tell you the truth anyone will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it what does that mean does that mean we have to act infantile and childish no this is not an excuse for childish behavior what it does tell us though it should be our attitude coming to God through Jesus should be like of a child a child in that society as in ours don't contribute in a way economically um, so they, their value in that sense is small yet we come in our relationship to God not in one way we contribute economically there's an imbalance between us and God and Christ and that's how we're supposed to come in our weakness in our frailty but also in complete trust uh, if you come if, if you have had children or have the privilege of working with children you realize that when they're a certain age they certainly completely trust they have an innocence about them unless they've been harmed and injured in some particular way and that's how we should come with total self-dependent reliance on god looking to him with complete innocence the kingdom of god is not earned by human effort it's entered in with childlike trust trusting in god as our father trusting his acts of grace and mercy through jesus and in the end we see this passage it says that jesus took the children in his arms and he put his hands on them and blessed them the beautiful thing about this image and what affects my personal journey with jesus is i keep having to come back to this childlike simple faith god calls me not because of what i contribute he calls me because he loves me jesus calls us to call the god his father our father and we're to come to our Abba with that like of innocence, that love which is unconditional, not based on what we do, what we contribute. Trusting in him, not because we know everything about him, but we know his character and nature, which is good, that he's for us. He wants to bless us. And if there's ever a moment we need to come to Christ in that childlikeness, come to the Father through Jesus in, in an innocence it is today not in demands, not because of something I've done that makes me worth anything, because he simply loves us and wants us to accept him as our father through Jesus. Where is God asking you to trust him? What is he saying? Just have a trial like faith. You're not going to know it all. You're not going to work it all out. He just says, just trust me. Perhaps today could be a day where we reaffirm that childlike faith in a loving Heavenly Father through Jesus, enabled by his spirit. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you. You took the innocent, the vulnerable, the powerless, and you love and accept them. And that really is us. We might not be innocent, but we're certainly powerless. Powerless to deal with our own inadequacies and our sin. Thank you that you love us and accept us. You embrace us when we look to you in faith. So help us to become with that simple childlike faith into the Father's arms and know the unconditional love and acceptance in return as we look to you as children. Help us today. Amen. God bless you. Keep looking to Jesus.